This is Chris with Fox Build. We're at the Makerspace in St. Charles, and I am going to show you our latest addition to the textile department. We have a 10 foot quilting frame, we have a mega quilter, and we have a Qbot for automated quilting. Before we get started with showing you how to load your quilt onto this frame, I want to talk about the different rollers so you understand the setup process. The roller that I'm standing next to here is called the take-up lever. This will take all three layers of the fabric of your quilt up as you're quilting it. The belly bar, um, or this top rail, is where we're going to load our quilt backing. The third rail is where we're going to load our quilt top. The bottom rail is where our batting will sit. Each of these rails are labeled with a sticky note, so it'll help you remember what is what. Currently, my rollers are free uh, rolling right now. There are locking mechanisms in there, and we're gonna show you how we set them so that we can roll up the fabric. This little plastic disc here with a quarter turn, you pull out and lock it in place. And you can see now the roller won't roll backwards, it only rolls in the direction it's meant to and it clicks. Same with this one and this one's going to roll in a different direction but it is now locked in place. On each of the rollers we have fabric leaders and the fabric leaders are what you're going to attach your quilt top and backing to. The bottom uh, well, we said the quilt top gets loaded on this third rail. This leader is the longest leader. It's long so that we can pull it up and over the belly bar in order to attach our quilt top bottom edge to rather than having to bend down and pin it down here somewhere. If this should come off, the thing you need to pay attention to, it's Velcroed to the roller, but pay attention to the center of the roller and there is on each of the leaders a red arrow that is marking the center point of the leader. Make sure that you recenter them. Um, we want the leader centered so that it makes it easy to keep your quilt top centered when you're loading it onto the frame. So you shouldn't have to reset these unless they fall off. So I'm going to roll up now the quilt top. As I said, I only have the back end connected and the rest of it is just free floating over the top of this rail. I'm going to show you how we get the rest of it loaded. I'm going to have my assistant come in and help me roll up the bottom rail. Keep it running. So that we can watch the fabric edges. attention to now as you're rolling is that your quilt top stays smooth as you're cranking it down. And you see now I have revealed the belly bar. Of course the belly bar also has a leader on it. And when I start to roll this one, um, I didn't point out, as this one was rolling, you notice that the fabric went um, to the reverse side. That is the correct orientation. The quilt top had to be pinned right side up, um, and the leader initially was right side up, but as you roll it, it goes to the reverse side. Now this one, I'm going to point this one down, and you will soon see that we have our backing partially attached already for time's sake. And that one is also, I took the center of my backing and matched it with the center arrow on this leader. And the backing, of course, is um, wrong side up as it would be if you were doing this on your table. You always lay your backing wrong side up and the quilt top is uh, right side up. So I'm going to continue cranking this 
and then show you how we attach the, the front end of each of those fabrics. Let's keep this smooth. Just watch for anything here because this kind of got dragged crooked. So let's keep the fabric smooth. Picking up lint. Is that edge straight? This is helpful if you have a buddy, for sure. If you're doing it yourself, just take your time and make sure that you're smoothing out your fabric. All right, we're going to stop there. And now you see the shortest of our three leaders is now on the take-up bar. Again, same concept. I have the center arrow at the center of this bar. Also from this view, um, the center arrow center bar this applies to all three rollers but from this angle you can see it also matches up with the center of the frame um, base here as well so you have several points that you can look at to help you with centering these leaders should they fall off if the leaders are not falling off all you have to worry about is matching the center of your fabrics to these arrows so from here I'm going to take the top edge of my backing which I've already marked my center point with a pin and I'm going to take that edge to that center arrow and you notice on the leader there's a pin line here that's where you want to put your pins um, it can be from that directly on that line or somewhere between that line and the edge of the leader um, I like to pin it right on the line if possible that gives me at least a quarter inch of secure fabric. This first pin sometimes is a little tricky, so if you have to readjust it, you can. But you want to go from center, and all I'm doing is pinching my fabric, hold it in my fingers here, and place my pin in this way. Okay, and I go center to the left side and center to the right side, and I'm going to get this all secured. So if my camera assistant wants to put the camera down. You can do that and pin the other side. Or you can pause either way. I didn't bring the pin. Okay, now we're finished pinning the top edge of our backing to the take-up roller. And I'm going to crank this up now just as far as I need to. So I'm kind of right at the edge of my fabric here at the bottom. Depending on how much extra fabric you have on your backing, you can roll this further, or in my case, I only have a couple of inches to play with, so I'm going to just take it right to the very edge of the fabric. Now, you see I have some slack in here, so that's the advantage to this roller, is I can now crank this one back to get this nice and taut and flat. Okay? Next goal is we need to lay our batting onto the quilt backing. And remember that's hidden underneath this quilt right now down here. When you pull your batting out, it needs to come up from behind the third rail and then over the top one. And now we need to put this into place. So I'll take that to the edge, smooth it out. Make sure I've got it centered as best I can. And if it was centered on the rollers, it shouldn't be too difficult. Any excess slack. The batting does not have the ability to lock. So it can free uh, float. So you'll find that it's a little bit looser on the rail, and that's OK. We're just going to lay it naturally onto the quilt backing. Then I'm going to pull this one out. And if it's not long enough, Remember, we have to release that rail again, which I'm going to do. So I can get a little more slack out of this because it doesn't roll backwards, it rolls forward. So I can get this near the top. Once I've got it in close to what I want, I'm going to lock my rail again, 
assistant can lock that one so that I can pull out any slack that I have. First, I'm going to tighten this one down. I'm also going to take out some of the slack on that batting just so that this is laying smooth. Now at this stage, you, your goal primarily is to ensure it's smooth and that it is square. In the textile room here, which is in the other room, we have a couple of large rulers that come in handy for this step. And I use them to ensure that my quilt, you can use the edge of your border or a block and double check that you have a nice straight line from end to end. And if it isn't, you want to fix that. And the reason that is, is once you start your quilting, in particular, if you do an edge to edge design and your quilt top is slightly angled, that design as it's stitching out is going to start to drift and may go out of the frame. So don't rush this last step. Make sure you're square. You can check from both sides, whatever you want to do. Just do your best to find a squaring point. And this does not look square. Not at all. Why are you looking crooked? There we go. That looks better. Okay. That looks better. And once I'm happy with the placement. I feel everything is good. And if you feel you need extra slack back into your fabric, remember, release the rollers so that it'll pull backwards and you can do it again. You can check any points on your quilt you need to. Once you're happy, we have this awesome little, I call it the tagger, because it reminds me of the little plastic pieces that you get on clothing in the store with a tag on it. Um, this will help me secure the quilt top, the batting, to the backing fabric. And it's got a safety cap because it's got a sharp needle. Take that off and you're just going to punch through your fabric, make sure it comes out the bottom, and give it a squeeze. And now it's tagged. Of course, if you don't want to do this to your quilt, you could put straight pins in here as well. I like this tool. And since it's here, I'm going to use it. 